Welcome everybody, my name is Robius and today I bring you a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History, this series where we compare the representations of characters and other elements depicted within one of the Assassin's Creed games to their actual history. Please be warned of major story spoilers ahead. For today's episode we'll be exploring the history of the colonial explorer, frontiersman and surveyor Christopher Gist. To start, we will cover his early life during the pre-game history, then we will explore his life in Assassin's Creed Rogue during the in-game history, and lastly we will summarize the differences between his actual life and his portrayal in the game. Starting with the pre-game history, Christopher was born in 1706 in Baltimore, Maryland. Despite records of his youth being somewhat scarce, many historians believe he received a very limited education in his youth. However, it seems that he was trained in the art of surveying by his father, Richard, and at some point developed impressive writing skills, which he would use to keep thorough journals in his later life. In his adulthood, Christopher married Sarah Howard, with whom he would have five children, while his brother Nathaniel Gist married Sarah's sister, Mary Howard. In 1750, Gist lived in North Carolina, where he was eventually chosen by the Ohio Company to explore and map the Ohio River up to Kentucky, while also creating positive relationships with the local Native Americans. He worked through the winter and beyond, mapping much of the required area, while also solidifying an existing relationship with a native chieftain known to the British as Old Britain. He was in fact the first English colonist to have explored this region. Unfortunately, upon his return home, Christopher learned that due to recent unrelated native attacks on his village, his family was forced to flee to Virginia. After later joining them, he was soon after contracted once again, this time to explore the western portion of Virginia and Pennsylvania. By 1753, Gist was back in the Ohio country, however this time he was accompanying Major George Washington of the Virginia Militia. The reason for this excursion was that Washington had recently been assigned by the governor of Virginia with the task of giving the French a message which demanded that they depart the Ohio country. At this point, Christopher Gist had been made a lieutenant for his previous service and was therefore chosen to join Washington on this mission as a guide. They traveled together down the Venango Path to reach Fort Le Boeuf to deliver their letter, which the French promptly ignored and continued with the construction of their forts. During this voyage, Gist is credited for saving George Washington's life on two occasions. He first apparently saved him from drowning during one stretch of the journey, and then later saved him from an assassination attempt when a native guide tried to shoot him on the way back from the French fort. In reason of the French decision to ignore their letter, in 1754, Washington and Gist, along with a portion of the Virginia militia, tried to drive them out of the region. Following the Battle of Fort Necessity, in which the French were victorious, the French and Indian War officially began in North America. In 1755, Christopher Gist was also a participant in the ill-fated Braddock expedition, as he had once again been chosen as the guide. Interestingly enough, Edward Braddock was also depicted as a Templar in the Assassin's Creed lore. Historically, when they were once again defeated by the French and their native allies, Gist and the remaining troops were returned to safety by Washington and the militia. After this defeat, Gist and Washington made the decision to move the location of one of the forts the Ohio Company was going to build, which aided in making it a valuable military post later in the war. Gist was eventually made captain of a company of scouts and an Indian agent. He left for Tennessee where he attempted to gain additional native support, specifically from the Cherokee in 1756 for the British forces. Through Washington's recommendations, he was eventually promoted to the position of Deputy Indian Agent to the Southern Department. Very few records exist concerning Christopher Gist's life after 1756, which fit perfectly with Assassin's Creed Rogue, as this was the point where we were first introduced to the frontiersman in the game, as Shea saved him from being executed by New York gang members. The end of Christopher Gist's life was also left rather uncertain, as some claim he died in 1759 from smallpox, either in Virginia, Georgia, or South Carolina, while other claims he survived until 1794, eventually dying in Cumberland, North Carolina. In summary, since we first met Christopher Gist in Assassin's Creed Rogue during the interval period of his life, starting in 1756, for which we possess very little documentation, it can generally be considered that the majority of his participation in Rogue's story was completely fictional. Although references were made to his past in the story, and the events of the Braddock expedition were demonstrated in Assassin's Creed 3, there are unfortunately no historical events to compare in terms of his representation in the game and his real life. Despite this, I believe that the character demonstrated in Rogue represented an interesting and enjoyable interpretation of the historical frontiersman, showing off his ambition, loyalty, and talents, aside from the whole being a Templar element. It could also be noted that the game seems to have taken the interpretation that he lived beyond 1759, as the final scene in which he participates in Rogue takes place in 1760. 
With that final fact, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try out one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters, groups, events, or locations from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all in a future historical video. It is uh, terribly dusty here. I'm sure Shay can recount his adventures to us over a pint. Hey, the first round's on uh, the Colonel. Huh? <laughs>